Oh hey, welcome back. I'm Mark, I'm a professional artist, an art teacher, and a candy connoisseur, but you know this already. If not, it means you're not a subscriber. <laughs> what? That's much better. Today, we're tackling the million dollar question, how to get faster at art, let me tell you. All right, so how do you build up your speed? If you're one of my students, you know the answer to this question already. Speed is more of a symptom of your knowledge of fundamentals rather than a skill that you can actually focus on. If anything, it's a really good overall gauge of your level as an artist. No way! But of course, if that's all there was to it, uh, well, I wouldn't be spending my time putting together a tutorial on the topic. The real answer is a little bit more nuanced, and I'm going to show you three things that you should start doing right now to wrap up your next piece faster than Bob Ross. Just kidding, that's not possible. Ignore that last part. And you'll see that it's not technically things to help you go faster, it's more things to avoid to not slow yourself down. Because, well, that's really the essence of it. While you can't really focus on the speed itself, there's certainly a lot of things that you can avoid wasting time on, and as a result, you know, shortening the time it'll take you to finish your pieces. So anyways, the first one is, uh, well, something that I've been doing for this one particular painting that I'm working on right now, and that would be to not zoom in. Don't zoom in. The biggest waste of time that most artists tend to be guilty of is over detailing. Spending a lot of time on smaller details that don't contribute to the final result much at all. I'm sure everybody watching has been guilty of this at some point in time, maybe often, maybe regularly. As you can see with this particular drawing though, I'm making a conscious effort to avoid zooming in on details and potentially wasting time down the line. This isn't just a problem for amateur artists either. I've seen many professionals, hell, I even catch myself sometimes, zooming in, working on the face of one of my characters and detailing it real good, only to zoom out and realize that the actual size that people will see it at makes it about five or six pixels wide, and all the details are just not visible at all. Worse even, I end up changing things completely later, and the detailing work I just did goes out the window. Carlos. So by avoiding to zoom in, or by using a bigger brush than you would normally use, which kinda does the same thing, it's kind of a, a way to offset the fact that you're zooming in, uh, using a bigger brush, uh, well, you make it harder for yourself to dump a ton of precious time on things that most people will likely not notice, or on details that you might not be 100% sure and might end up deleting later on. This is a massive problem with artists, and just fixing that in your workflow should make you about twice as fast. Maybe. Of course, this point is way more relevant at the beginning of a project where you still have a lot of unknowns and you're still figuring things out. As your idea and concept get more fleshed out, you can start to relax and do, you know, whatever you need to do to wrap up your piece. So then, what's a good size to work at, you ask? Well, the size that it will be displayed at. In my case, I make the drawing full screen and I start working at that size. If you're only posting on Instagram, for example, then you can probably work even smaller, but then again, what kind of savage would only post on Instagram? That's crazy. All right, moving on. And by the way, all of these apply to pretty much any kind of art, 2D and 3D included. Simply amazing. All right, and then uh, the next point has to do with levels of detail. So the idea here is that you break up Anything that you're working on, whether it be just the line art, the shading, the colors, doesn't matter. Anything you tackle should be broken down in three different steps. Big details, medium-sized details, and small details. And of course, this ties in pretty closely with the previous point. And the whole idea here is that you set yourself up so that your workflow has a bunch of checkpoints, in a sense. So for example, in this case, when it comes to shading, well, I'd be shading all the bigger pieces first, thinking of the whole as a, as a silhouette almost. Then moving on to medium-sized details, those would be kind of like all the bigger chunks of the armor or the mech. 
the different sections of the limbs, you know, the shoulders, the torso, those kinds of big chunks. And finally, once that's done, then I can focus on the smaller details, things like the bolts, like scratches, little cables or wires that are sticking out, the smaller details on the character herself. But like I said, this works with any particular step that you're at. So if it were the line arts that we're talking about, then I would still tackle it exactly the same way. And that one might be a little bit more familiar, but I'm sure you've heard before to work on a rough sketch first before you move on to any kind of details. So always, always starting rough on things that have very little impact, or if you have to redo them, they're at the beginning of the process. So it's never that big of a deal. And then once your big details are done, and once you're happy with them, Usually, you know, if you move on to the next step and tack start tackling the medium sized details, it's quite rare that you'll have to go back to your bigger details and tweak those if you felt they were okay before. So by focusing your time this way and kind of narrowing down the scope of your focus, it makes it really, really hard to go down a rabbit hole and waste a bunch of time on something that you might have to redo later. And that's great. This one is not only really, really good to help yourself save time, but it's something that you should always consider when approaching absolutely anything in art. You'll see your progress a lot faster if you always break down your projects into three parts, the bigger details, the medium sized details and the smaller details. Do it. And we're down to the final point here. And this is going to be the most important. So good for you. If you made it this far, you're not a loser. The final point to make your art faster is to work mostly on things you are familiar with and only a few little things, a few little skills that you're not really good at. Why? Well, it's pretty simple. You're slow at things you suck at. So let's say you're trying to start a new painting and your fundamentals are, you know, mediocre at best. I'm not saying this is you, I'm just imagining a random person. And let's say that this random person decides to tackle a really challenging painting, which includes, of course, a lot of sketching, a lot of difficult perspective, a couple characters, some cool light setups, so a lot of lights, very shading intensive. On top of that, wants to add a cool story to the illustration, so a lot of storytelling, and of course, make it look great. Now, if every single one of the skills involved to create that painting or that illustration or, you know, whatever it is, if all those skills are not that great, well, you're going to struggle every step of the way. It's going to take you a very long time. And that's the opposite of going faster. So instead, what I recommend is to work on mostly things that you're familiar with. Think of it in percentage, you know, tackle projects that require, you know, about 80% of your skills to be mostly there to be pretty good. And the other 20% not so good so that you'll be working on that 20% and smooth sailing through the other first 80%. Of course, when you translate that into time that it takes you it's going to be mostly a quick process with only a little bit of struggle, you know, like that 20% struggle versus somebody that struggles the whole way and takes more time at every single step. Now, of course, I know some people in the comments are gonna say, well, what if I suck at everything? You don't suck at everything. There's for sure something that you're better at and just make sure that you always include that skill when working on something new. If you're really good at anatomy, for example, but you suck at perspective, well, don't go and start working on environments without any character or without any anatomy. That's just jumping in a situation where everything is foreign and everything is going to be a struggle. Instead, well, maybe work on characters that you feel more, you know, more comfortable, more at ease drawing and try placing those characters in different environments, like simple environments, maybe just a simple room or just standing on the ground, but making it really feel like the characters standing on the ground or maybe introducing a little bit of foreshortening into your drawings. Basically things to push your skills just a little bit more than what you're comfortable with, but not too much. Let's actually take a look at what this would look like here. So that might be a little bit more obvious. So this is a completely random, uh, artist stats sheet, right? So let's say this is, this is you. I'm not saying it's you again. I'm just saying it's a person called you don't mean to insult anybody. And here are your stats. Of course, there are many more skills when it comes to just arts and art fundamentals, but let's say those are the only six that we're observing here in this context. So anatomy, perspective, storytelling values, design and colors. As you can see here, our little person here, you, is uh, really good, well, not so good, but pretty good at anatomy and mostly bad at the rest. Storytelling, not so bad either. So let's say you're trying to pick a project, something that you don't want to take too long. Is this going to be the project for you? In this case, a project that requires pretty much all your skills to be 
quite high, something like a full illustration maybe, something that uses a lot of different skills. Well, in this demonstration here, if we overlap the two, basically everything that's kind of like this light blue here is stuff that you're lacking, things that are going to be a struggle. And of course, this means extra time. So the more blue you have here, the longer things will take you. So maybe not the best project for you, but what about a project that's like this, right? In this case, the project that you would tackle, you know, doesn't require any kind of knowledge of values, design, or color. Mostly anatomy and perspective. The perspective part is going to be a little bit of a challenge because yours is not quite up to par. But if we do the same thing here and overlap again, our two little graphs, well, this is a little bit of blue, but not too much, right? Just a little bit, as opposed to before, where it was basically just an ocean of blue. A project like this will take you less time. Pretty dang straightforward. The really cool part about this, if you work this way, is that not only is the, the whole process going to be much faster, right? But while you won't be focusing on anatomy too much, if that skill is already pretty, pretty good, all your attention is going to be on perspective if that is the other skill that is not as good, if the project doesn't require anything else, right? So in this particular case, you would have your full undivided attention on the perspective skill. I would tend to guess that you're going to level that skill up much faster if you focus all your attention on it, instead of diluting it between, you know, perspective, storytelling, values, design, and colors. So not only is your painting, your sculpt going to be completed faster, but the one skill that is not really up to par is going to be leveled up much faster as a result. And so you can rinse and repeat with different skills by only, only tackling a few skills at a time, because that's a better way to learn. There we have it. The three things that you need to do to speed up your art, I hope this was helpful. And as usual, you know, if you try this and it works, it will. Let me know. Let us know down in the comments. All right, so that's it for the tutorial. One thing I want to add is that if you want my brushes, my starter brush set is available for free yeah, until we're no longer stuck at home, pretty much. So I don't know how much longer that's going to be, but you can find a link to them up in the top right corner of the screen. And of course, I'll put a link down in the description below. As usual, if you end up, you know, trying this or any previous tutorial, or if you use my brushes, let me know, you know, tag me on social media, especially on Twitter and Instagram, mostly Instagram. But yeah, I always try to, to retweet or share my stories when I have time to send hopefully a little bit of my traffic your way. This way, well, it helps you a little bit and it helps me by making me happy, win-win. If you don't know by now, I release a new tutorial like this every single Friday and there's no better way to let me know that these are helpful than by making sure that you're subscribed and smashing that like button.